Hi guys, and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can colour match two photos together to combine them into a composite using Photoshop. And I'm going to start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose two photos. Firstly, you want a foreground photo, and then you want a background photo, which we're going to color match to. Now, I'll also recommend already having the cutout of the foreground. So at the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my main photo. Again, both of these photos are gonna be available on unsplash.com, and I'll make sure to leave the link in the description. So at the moment, as you can see, I've got this photo, which I'm going to color match to another photo. But bear in mind, I have already created a cutout. So make sure to have the photo already cut out. Now, if you'd like to learn how to do professional clean cutouts in Photoshop, I'll make sure to leave the link in the description and I'll put the video up here so you can follow along. So go ahead and watch that and then come back to this once you've cut out the photo. But once you've got to that stage, what you'll need to do now is to actually place the background photo with this. And this is what we're going to color match to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my background photo. Again, I'm all, this is also available on uh, unsplash.com and I'm gonna go ahead and place that on the back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that like so. And I'm gonna go and press enter to confirm the placement. But obviously we need this behind because obviously it's the background photo. So I'm gonna go that my layers panel on the right hand side and drag that below. So as you can see, this is the composite we're working with. Now, as you can see, the colors don't match whatsoever. They look like they're two completely separate photos. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the colors from the background and place them over using an adjustment layer over the foreground so then the colors look correct. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the curves adjustment layer. So make sure we've got our background copy. So that's our background here. We're gonna go down to our adjustment layers icon in the bottom right hand corner. And we're gonna go ahead and choose the curves adjustment layer, which is near the top. Once we've done that, what we need to do is so it just affects the foreground. Because obviously the colors we're copying over, we don't wanna duplicate that over on the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a clipping mask. So it only affects the layer below. So we've got our layer here. We're going to right click on that layer and we're gonna go down to create clipping mask. And what that'll do is it will solely just affect the layer below, which is the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our curves adjustment layer, making sure we've got our curves adjustment layer clicked and not the layer mask of the adjustment layer, just the adjustment layer. And what we want to do is to affect three channels. We want to affect the red channel, then we're gonna change the green, and then we're going to change the blue. So what we're going to do first is we're gonna to go to our channel options. So right next to our layers, we've got our channel options here. We want to turn everything off but red. So we're gonna turn off RGB, we're gonna turn off green, and we're gonna turn off blue. So it should be a black and white photo. And this is solely our red channel. So we'll go back to our layer panel, and what we want to do is in our curves adjustment layer, we want to go ahead and choose from the dropdown, from RGB, we're gonna go ahead and choose red. And the idea to this is to match the luminosity of the two photos. And we'll do this for every single channel and that should correct the colors so they match. So as you can see, the background is quite dark in the reds, but the front or the foreground is quite bright. So in our red channel, we're going to darken the reds on the foreground. So we're gonna get the foreground and we're gonna go ahead and darken it. And what you want to do is to try and match the two photos so they look the same brightness or luminosity. So I'm going to go ahead and darken this so they look like they're matching. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something similar to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and brighten up the black slightly, create a bit more of a matte look, but we're darkening the midtones and we're darkening the highlights. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something like so. So once you've done that and you are happy with the results, probably gonna darken it ever so slightly more. So we're gonna go for something like this. We're now gonna go ahead and do it to the green channel. So we're gonna go to our channels, again, right next to our layers, but this time we're gonna go ahead and select green and we're gonna go ahead and turn off red. Then we're gonna go back to our layer panels again, making sure we've got our curves adjustment layer clicked. And from the drop down, instead of choosing red this time, we're gonna go ahead and choose green. And we're gonna do exactly the same. So we're gonna try and match the colors as best as possible. So the photos, or the two photos, look the same brightness. And that's really important. So we're gonna go ahead and this time we're going to brighten it slightly. 
So we're gonna go ahead and brighten it just a smidge. And then we're gonna go ahead and probably brighten up the black slightly. And let's bring down the mid-tones there as well. So we're gonna go for a look that looks something similar to this. So it's a little bit guesswork and you can try and look at what the photo looks like. So we're gonna go for a look that looks similar to this, lovely. So all we need to do now is just do the blue channel. So we're gonna go back to our channels again. This time, instead of choosing green, we're gonna go ahead and choose blue this time. And we're gonna go back to our layers. And we're gonna go choose, instead of green here, we're gonna go ahead and choose blue. And all you need to do now is try and match the brightness again. So in this case, we probably need to be raised slightly, but not by too much. And I think that's going to be it on this particular layer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, lovely. So we've done the greens, we've done the uh, reds, and now we're just affecting the blues, lovely. So once we're happy with that, we can now turn all of the channels and then we're gonna create a global effect. So the photo looks the same brightness and that's really important. So we're gonna go back to our channels and this time we're just gonna go ahead and turn on RGB, lovely. So as you can see, at the point in time, before we have changed any of the brightness, if we do the before and we do the after, you can see that has really color matched the photo. And it's because, because we're matching each of the tones, that's red, green, and blue, because they're the three main primary colors in all photos, it's going to make it consistent through the rest of the colors as well. So it's really, really easy to get this effect. So what we want to do now is to just roughly fix the brightness and that's really easy. So we're going back into the same curves adjustment layer, but this time, instead of choosing a particular channel, we're gonna choose all channels, so that's red, green, and blue, and then we're going to go ahead and change that. So we're gonna brighten it just ever so slightly, but, but not too much. So again, this is where we're just matching the actual brightness of the photo. Lovely, so we're gonna go for something that looks similar to this. Now what I recommend is once you've done that, we can create a global filter. So this is a filter that will affect the entire image, both foreground and background. So what we're gonna do is go down to our adjustment layers in the bottom right hand corner, and then we're gonna go ahead and choose curves again. And this time, what we can do is actually create a global pass, so the photos or the colors are now matched by using a global filter. So that affects every single pixel instead of using just a selected pixel on the foreground. So we'll go ahead and do a global pass like so. Lovely. So we'll go ahead and just darken the shadows slightly and brighten up the mid-tones. Lovely. Now, obviously the background is incredibly sharp and it wouldn't necessarily be the case. So what I would always recommend doing, especially if you ever create a composite, is try and match the blur that the original photo did because that's what make the photo look realistic. So again, we've got our background here. So let's go and select our background. Let's go up to filter. Then let's go to blur and we're gonna go ahead and choose Gaussian blur. And I'll recommend probably around about a 10 pixel blur in this particular case. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So as you can see, now this photo looks a hell of a lot more realistic instead of just simply trying to match the colors using guesswork. So you can try and match each guesswork, or try and match each color by the luminosity. So go to the reds, match the colors with the reds using the black and white layer, and then it will come out looking really, really good. And this works on all types of photos. So if I do the before, and we do the after, you can see the color matches brought a lot of those greens from the background and placed it on the foreground. Now obviously you can add a few more effects, like you could probably add some light rays, maybe you could add some flaring in there, maybe even a slight vignette to really bring out this photo. But that is how you can color match two photos together to create a realistic composite using Photoshop.